What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and we are here live doing my live show where I talk about, well, everything astrology, everything going on in the universe. That's what I like to do here in my live studio. And I thought I'd come up with this live show right now because, well, there's so much about to happen in the universe right now. So I thought I'd get everyone ready to go. I hope you're all ready to go. I hope you got your seatbelts ready. We are coming into a very powerful week. And I'm going to describe this week why this week is so rare. And in astrology, when we say this is rare, right, it's it's rare because it's astronomically almost impossible for all these events to happen again or at the same time. There's a lot of different ways to describe that whole energy. And that's what I'm going to be describing here today because I think that it's so important for everybody to realize how powerful this really is live because really it is that powerful. There is so much energy happening that we all need to pay attention to this week and it's happening at a time in our lives where I think overall we're all kind of in this wonder, where in the hell is this all going? how crazy life is. Things are starting to peak out, or what I, is what I like to say, like the peak out's happening. It's like, oh. So before we're going to go into all this, if you could share this video right now, I'm actually posting it to my wall um, and doing my little share game. I'd love it if you um, share it because we're going to be in here for the next half hour. I also am going to be loading up the chat room and then I'm going to pull uh, some tarot cards at the end. So uh, it's going to be a really fun little live session that we're doing here. So I would hate for anybody that you know to miss it. Please help share it. I just actually put up an alert on the Leo King app. That's right, yo, yo. So there it is. Live talking about Mercury Retrograde. And by the way, it is coming up Mercury Retrograde right now. We're going to talk about that too. Um, so give me one sec. I don't want to look like I'm somebody who doesn't know like how to type. But um, I'm finally posting it all over the place. There's a lot of places to post this, believe it or not. Um, and I want to make sure that I get into the chat room. The chat room is the best part. So if you have questions or it's better also as well to join the chat and look and see how other people are feeling because I think it helps people kind of know what's going on. I mean, there's been so much weirdness building up to this week already that I think a lot of people are looking for answers. And so I think it helps when overall it's like we have a way for us to to kind of help each other out. And the chat room is kind of that whole way. And of course I can't mute my own self like <laughs> trying to load the chat and mute this thing. Uh, all right. I think we're good there. I am officially in the chat room now. They need to really figure this whole like uh, thing out. Like if I push you, yeah. all right, yeah. Uh, uh, so crazy. It is Mercury retrograde, and I am trying to do this show. I guess I got the chat room working. All right. One more share, and I swear I'm done. I swear I'm done. Just one more share. Bump, bump, bump. Not easy to share this stuff. Share in a group. There we go. The Leo King Astrology Group. If you guys are not in the Leo King Astrology Group, I still add people all the time. We're almost up to 8,500 people, I think, was the last time I checked. Um, it's a big group, all astrology-based. Everybody talks, helps each other out. Um, that group is hopping. And good. We got a lot of people in the room now, so I, I'm not feeling so like... Uh, I did this for nothing, you know, there's, there, it's, there's something about, um, doing astrology in these live shows. Like, are they worth it? Or do people like them? And actually that's a good question to ask people. Do you guys enjoy me doing these live shows? Because I mean, I just invested a lot more money into making these live shows crazier. I don't get all the equipment till this week. And then I go to Vegas next week. We're going to do a little teaser of it next week. By the way, that's pay-per-view if you want to watch live, if you're not going to make it out to Vegas. And we're putting out a lot of new aspects out there. So 
Um, okay, yes, you love them. It's good. I, I don't know if people are liking them or not. So it's good to get good feedback from people. But here we are. Let's uh, now move into the astrology and get a little bit serious now, shall we? Uh, and actually, I want to say this about being serious. I posted a video this morning and last night uh, calling it September to Remember, and tomorrow's the webinar for it. But the reason why I called it September to Remember, because of course, it's just so much happening and it rings really well, and it would definitely be a month that you'll remember for the rest of your life. But some people got afraid, even to the point to where I received phone calls today. I mean, I get that, of course. I do astrology horoscopes. I do them publicly. I've been doing it for almost five years publicly every day and covering the cosmos. So, you know, there's days when people try to call me and, you know, oh, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? I'm a little nervous right now. People get scared. People get like straight up scared. And I was actually felt bad because I didn't try to scare no one with that video. All I was saying is, I've seen the alignments that are coming up during this month of September before in different signs, of course, different aspects and so forth, right? Right, Whatever you want to call it. But when you expect things to happen a certain way, and this is a general spiritual lesson, right? But it's triple when you got all this energy in Virgo. Virgo is the sign of expectation, right? It's the sign of adjusting things into its proper place. It is also the sign of harvest where you really kind of find out exactly what the harvest is. You know, you kind of count your your wheat and go, oh, or your corn and you go, well, we thought we were going to have 50 bushels. We only got 47. You know, we weren't counting on losing three. You know, it's like Virgo is a sign of numbers and math, but it's a little bit different than Gemini, which rules by Mercury. So this Mercury retrograde is going to have us really rethink our expectations, problem-solving aspects that are different more in what we're harvesting, what more of the life that we can live. Is it manageable? Because this is the last mutable sign in the top part of the chart, Virgo, right? We then move into the second or that other half of the chart, which is the, the lower half, which is also when the sun goes through its dying phase, right? It gets put basically through its crazy fall equinox in Libra, and then it enters into the dark of Scorpio. And then you have to live off your, you know, your wheat or what you harvested. That's why Virgo is harvest season. September is the harvest, right? You, you, you're going to live with what you got. Cause back in the day, you know, you, you, you didn't survive the winter if you didn't have a good harvest in the summer. So that's why I told people like, yo, don't, expect it all to go the way that you would want it to because this is way too much mutable energy. There's way too much craziness, to be honest with people, about what's going on. Um, and so it's just like I'm trying to help people like realize that the craziness right now is learning to let things just chill out. Learning to go with the flow with things because I think things right now are a little bit insane and we, there's too much fog around this corner. We're just about to enter Mercury retrograde in Virgo, which already is natural home. So the mind and the expectations and the figuring it all out, man, whew, could become a little bit overwhelming. There's also Jupiter at the edge of Virgo. Cannot wait to leave Virgo. Jupiter does not like being there. He's in such a tight space. You know, f- f- Jupiter is a fat ass. Whenever you got Jupiter... On the rising, you, you got to be careful of eating too much. Or if you ever got a lot of Jupiter going on, you know, you kind of look like a sumo, you know? And that's not a bad thing. But Jupiter's the biggest planet. He's this big old fat guy up there in space. And when he's in Virgo, you know, Virgo's like, we can live in a 300 square foot house. Did you know that? And it's economical and it's perfect and it's all right. You know, when you see those little Facebook little like posts of people making these like crazy little spaces, you can live in 100 square feet real nice and grow a garden on top. Poor Jupiter walks in there and goes, oh, I can't fit in this crap. Jupiter needs a king kingdom. Like Jupiter needs a big thing. He also was ruled by Pisces, right? Like Jupiter needs a big deal. Jupiter's a big, you know, professor as well. And and he he can't do it in a little classroom. He needs a big auditorium. You know, it's like, so Jupiter can't wait to get out of Virgo. There's just so much in this tight space and we can't see Saturn squaring Neptune. I mean, this is just, 
The weeks of all weeks. Really. September is the months of all months. I mean, I've been saying it since the beginning that September was going to be the craziest month of the year. Uh, it's like we all don't need, I don't even know what comes after. I mean, I know the astrology, but it like there's this sense where it's like, I don't even know where I'm going in October. If you were to ask somebody right now, what are you doing in October? It'd just be kind of like, well, I don't know. You know, I think, you know, there's the basic like life things. Like, oh, I got to go back to school or, oh, I've got my jobs doing this. But it's like, well, wait, where's your soul feeling like energetically it's going with relationships and, you know, your wants, your needs, your passions, the adventure in your life. There's some major decisions coming. We're going to talk about that. I got to show a little bit of astrology because I think I'm just talking a little bit too much here. Uh, Give me one second. I mean, here we go. So... We'll put it on a little bit of screen share. People like when I do the screen share thing. Let's do a little screen share. So we're going to add all the uh, asteroids here. We're going to do some stuff here. And right now I have the eclipse loaded up, but right now I'm going to load up uh, the 30th of August because... Here we are, Mercury retrograde. We're going to talk about this real quick first. Okay. So if you see right here, here's at 1 a.m. August 30th, okay? So tonight, Mercury is stopped, and it's stopped at the edge of Virgo. Look at all this Virgo. Sun, North Node, Jupiter, Mercury. Venus just left. So Venus is at its fall position, so there's actually some sort of relief there. I could go really deep into it, but really Venus has now arrived home, and relationship aspects now have become quadrupled. When Venus comes into its natural planet or sign of Libra, it gets gnarly, okay, people? with relationships, and with all this stuff in Virgo, it's all about the kind of life that you want, right? The kind of life that you're trying to figure out. And with this Mercury retrograde beginning, with a Venus that's just moved out and into Libra, I, especially Mercury is retrograding on top of Venus and on top of Jupiter. Jupiter is the life that you want to adventure in and go for. Venus is the life that you desire, that you want to create, and you manifest. With Mercury retrograding in Virgo on these two spots, whew, definitely rethinking what you're creating, who you're going to be with, and where you're going. And the picky, the pickiness, the criticism, the, the exact way that you want it to be, there's no coincidence that the moon is in Leo during this Mercury retrograde. It's really all about what you really want and what you really don't want. We're going to check the chat room real quick here. See how people are doing in the chat. I like, uh, we had Mary Carmen in here just say, ready for a beautiful and abundant life. Bring it on. And you know, that's what this is about. Virgo really is all about bringing that beautiful and harmonious life. It really is. And I think that you need to realize with Virgo, it is a beautiful sign. But there is another side of Virgo that is, it's either pure or unpure. Same thing with Pisces, right? It's either very godly or completely lost and like just lost and not connected. When you deal with Virgo, you can see it, and I'm going to use examples with celebrities. Charlie Sheen, Virgo. Many Virgos don't like to associate with Charlie Sheen because when they see him talk about tiger's blood and he definitely looks ill and sick, there's been times if you look at Charlie's life, though, he looks a, like a beautiful man. I'm not gay or anything, but, you know, like he looks, and if you look at his youth, he looked good. It's when he went down the path of impurity you could see Virgos through the like easier than pie because 
when they're in an unpure place or on a lot of drugs or just not in a good, healthy, pure health position or they have a health problem, you can tell. See it right through Virgo. It's easy. That's why with Charlie Sheen, when he just looks wrong, you just know he's up to no good because there's no veil with Virgo. It's you're either pure or you're not. Either the wheat is going to be eatable or it's got mold on it and it's a bad crop. Okay. Every sign has duality, right? Leo is simple. It's either a true lover and it's loving from its heart or it's just an, like an egoic only for its kingdom and F you everyone, you know? Cancer is trying to protect or at the same time, you know, it's an emotional wreck. Can't take care of itself. So, you know, we can go through all the signs, but, you know, Virgo specifically for this eclipse pattern and this Mercury retrograde and this Jupiter finishing here and this North, North, North node here is like, is this the pure road? And especially because it's opposing all the energy that's happening in Pisces, right? Chiron, Neptune, South Node. I talked a lot about drugs. How funny on the last episode last week. Not funny, but then all those crazy drug overdoses happened. Right after I said it, it was like kind of scary. I'll be honest. I was like, whoa, why didn't... But, you know, that's up until November. I think the whole drug story thing's not going to end till the end of November. And the deception, we'll go into that. You have to see that, you know, this is really about pure because the other side of Pisces is godly or unconnected. So are you really connected in the adventure that you're going towards right now? That is it godly? Is it pure? Is it really going to get you out of old patterns of, I don't want to say darkness, but darkness? This kind of deals with darkness in your own way. And all darkness is is misinformation or not being in the light per se and just being in your own kind of unconscious world. These are serious lessons coming our way in life. Very serious. Uh, The reason why is because Saturn is involved. Mars is involved. And they're making big squares, right? To the nodes, to, to Neptune, to... The sun with the solar eclipse coming. But this, you know, this Mercury retrograde is like not being afraid to be critical, but learning as well because it will make oppositions to Chiron. Like to get the life you want, to go on the adventure you want, make sure it's connected, make sure it's pure, but also don't. I hate to say this, but you guys know I'm just raw as hell. And I'm just going to say I'm raw as fuck, right? Okay, and I'm going to look at the camera when I tell you this. <laughs> okay. Compassion is the number one thing in the universe. But. I said but after compassion. There are limits to it. You know, if you're a lady who loves cats and you like have a, you're a crazy cat lady and you donate to the cat adoption services and you have compassion every month that's great but when you're giving your whole paycheck there and you can't afford your rent anymore you have done the over compassionate way and now you can't live and you can't take care of yourself which is all the virgo reality things in your life right now this mercury retrograde is going to say you have to take care of yourself And the things and the life that you want and the adventure you want to go for and to have the hope for that. But you can't lose yourself in whatever it is that could be distracting you, getting you lost, taking up your precious time, or getting you off of your path to harvest a life of purity. And it can be deceived. It could be shadowed. It could be looked at like it is the greatest thing on water. Walk on water. My fa- I love Pablo Francisco. He's like one of my favorite comedians. And he does this skit where he's like, you know, all the martial arts today are like over extreme, like ha, jump four stories and go ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Or it's like they all walk on water now. It's like, 
is this a Jet Li movie where it's a little bit too, the bullet stops and passes you by, and it's like, that's not reality. Like, if a bullet passes by you, it's going to go by really fast. You're not going to even know it went by you. And if it didn't hit you, you're lucky as hell. And you're going to freak out. And you're going to have a little bit of a panic. And you're going to run the hell away. You're not going to be sitting there and be like, shoot me right now. Or do the whole, like, am I Mission Impossible? Like, yeah, shoot me. And I'm going to go on my back and, like, let the bullet fly on my face. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah, right. This is where... We can be cloaked, we can be fooled into thinking that there are things that really are leading to the reality that we want that really aren't. We have to see, and this is what Mercury Retrograde is going to help you with because Mercury Retrograde is going to turn the computer into a different mode. I've always looked at computers and really crazy algorithms as Virgo Mercury. I've always looked at chalkboards with long equations, not as Gemini, believe it or not. I think Gemini is the more basic primitive mind. It's like, I want to tell them this, I'm going to tell them that. I like shoes. I like red ones. You know, it's it, it, it because it comes after Taurus, right? Taurus kind of says, you know, your values, and then Mercury kind of understands it, communicates it, and does it. What comes after Vir or before Virgo is Leo. Your true heart, your true creation, your true power of your soul. It's also, you know, it's like it's also very related with the whole story of Jesus and the Virgin Mary, right? And so when you're dealing with Mercury retrograde in Virgo, you're dealing with the purity of Mary, but you're also dealing with the figuring out of your true identity of soul, your true outer expression, because Leo is your outer expression and how to refigure that out. And I've always looked at that as really crazy algorithms because we have our own really weird souls that we are. But see, there's a similarity in Taurus where we all know that Mercedes Benzes are nice. We all know that leather interior is better than cloth. That's a very Taurus thing, right? The thing about Leo, though, is it doesn't deal with what we all identify with. Leo is what we individually identify with. So the master mechanical thought process that comes after that is unique to us all. But it also allows us to figure out complex, very detailed and thin lines. It's also a much more matured Mercury, right? Because Virgo comes way after Gemini. And Mercury is a dualistic, which means it's not a malefic and it's not a, bene it's not a beneficial planet. It's a, it's a hermaphrodite. I've tried to say this a long time for people. Some people like take it like offensively that I call Mercury a hermaphrodite. It is a hermaphrodite. It's got no junk and it's got no hole. <laughs> It's got no titties either, or it's got, you know, it's, 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 it's the only one planet. And why do you think five is ruled by Mercury? It's because it's in the middle of all the numbers, zero through nine, right? So it's the only one that can go between both sides of the numbers. It's in the middle. It's the only one that could travel from heaven into hell with messages. So when you have Mercury retrograde in its home sign, especially the much more mature one, this one doesn't deal with psychotic episodes like you get in Gemini because if your if your basic malfunctions of Gemini are not working square Neptune that we had in 2015 that Mercury retrograde that showed you psychotic energy losing your mind per se this is how do I really create and figure out the algorithm of my life that was some deep shit and you know what when I come into deep shit, I got to give you a 60 second commercial and I'll be right back to talk more about this. Yeah. <laughs>
up to astrology like you've never seen before. Yo, yo, we are back. The Leo King up in the house talking about this astrology, this Mercury retrograde. I think I just solved your whole problem to your life right now. <laughs> no, I did it. But at least I gave you the understanding of when you're on the chalkboard, that's what's going down right now. It's a very crazy algorithm here to try and figure out your life. It's also the last sign, okay? Virgo is the last sign before you come into the only sign that is not an animal or a human being, Libra. Why is Libra a thing? That's why Libras are so weird, right? Because they're not, you know, they're the balance beam, right? They're the balance, they're the, they're the scales. And it's in between worlds. So before we jump into this in between world space, which actually I think we kind of are in because we're in so much mutable energy, and that's a whole nother story. But before all this goes into Libra, right? It's like we want to have our life figured out. Because once you cross into Libra, that's where you kind of come into the deeper shade into the underworld of your life or the other half of your life. It's also the the cross point, the equinox point, right? So, ah, Mercury retrograde, figuring out your life on the deepest of all levels. Good news, Mercury will not oppose Neptune during this retrograde. You should thank God for that. I just drank some Sprite, so I'm going to burp. Excuse me. That's how we do here on the Little King channel. The reason why you should thank God that Mercury will not oppose Neptune is because the last time Mercury did a retrograde square or did a negative aspect to Neptune, especially when it stopped, oh, I'm telling you people, we all lost it last year in the spring, okay? Virgo does not lose it. It stays in reality. It keeps the matrix together, okay? So even though this might be scary, and this is a big solar eclipse coming, which that's what I'm going to have to change the, uh, the, the chart to right now and go into that. And I'm going to discuss why this is such a rare thing. That's kind of why I posted this whole thing. And then I'm going to have to go, but... I want to I want to cover all this as fast as I can before the food closes next door where I need to go eat because I'm starving. <laughs> um, hold on one second here. Let me get this chart going. Uh, you know the thing is is you the reality can be freaked out because of Neptune's very powerful placement in Pisces. It's at home. And it's going to oppose this solar eclipse. And it's, it, it's got Saturn being squared. It, it, and so it's, and it, what it's doing is Saturn is, in, is being squared by the solar eclipse as well. So Saturn is just overpressured. It's had Mars go over it. It's had Mars station retrograde on it. It's been sitting on the star Antares, which is also another sign, or, or I guess you could say energetic energy that just does not go well with Saturn, okay? Saturn just does not have that much power as far as like craziness and uh, intensity. Saturn wants it to be chilled out and controlled. And, and, and Taurus is a star of liberation. It's in a sign right now of Sagittarius, which is all about expression of freedom, opening doors. And Saturn is all the opposite, closing them and trying to restrain them and keep them controlled. You got to see that we are just at a time where the pressure to make decisions while figuring out your life is very, very hard. And the fear that you're going to like, that the reality is going to like, all the dimensions are going to just overwhelm us, which they might, but we will be anchored through this. That's why I'm saying don't use drugs, kids. And I'm sounding like a D.A.R.E. commercial now. My D.A.R.E. cop would be very happy. But, you know, and the, here's the solar eclipse, okay? Nine degrees. Now, this isn't the exact. It's right there, though. The moon comes, like, I think within, like, 10 minutes of this. But see, at nine degrees square, that Saturn opposed that Neptune at 10. That is not easy. Already a sun square Saturn is 
major lessons, major decisions that are not easy to deal with, and especially in a world that you're trying to figure out and where you're going. And the opposition to Neptune in with the South Node is not letting, not being, being, not being fooled, not letting your sensitivities uh, overwhelm you. So where you don't do what you know you should do, what the right thing to do is. This is also Mercury retrograde conjunct Jupiter. Big, powerful understandings, big, powerful lessons to understand, big, powerful visions, but with hard decisions and, and very, and this is why this is so rare and this will never happen in our life again. Solar eclipse, while Mercury is retrograde in Virgo, its natural sign, while Jupiter is in there, that will not happen in our lifetime again, folks, okay? It won't. If you do the math, it won't. Okay? This will never happen again, especially with the square to Saturn and the opposition to Neptune at its home because Neptune takes 160 years to come around the sun and folks, it will not be in this area anymore because in, in less than a decade, Neptune comes out of Pisces and won't be back there in our lifetime. So we'll never have a solar eclipse opposed Neptune in its natural home again. All right. And guess what? The solar eclipses start moving into Leo and then they start moving into Cancer in the next couple of years. Then Gemini, which will have maybe a square. I haven't looked that far ahead, but that's definitely possible at the end of the Neptune Pisces transit. Maybe a solar eclipse square Neptune that might be there. We might want to look ahead and have the astro nerds look, even though that's my job. But what I'm trying to say is that this week is more rare than you realize. The decisions are tough, but the hope must be found. The adventure must be found. The not getting lost and overwhelmed and giving away too much of what you got to where you have nothing left to create anything with is, I think, the great lesson. And you will figure these things out. And I want to say this because that... That video I did, that video I did, people freaked out a little bit on me, okay? I'll be honest. They were like, I don't think they understood how to take what I was saying. All I was saying is, don't expect anything. When you have all this mutable energy, when it's that much change, and we don't know where it's going to go, Saturn square Neptune in a big square, right? Just like, boom. The, 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 the reality, especially with Saturn being, that, Saturn rules the actual structure and the bones or the, the, the physical beams of the building, right? The teeth, the bones of your body, that structure. Um, Virgo rules, you know, how your mind connects with all the lymph nodes and with all the nervous systems. And uh, you could look at it as the, like, the connective energy, maybe even like... Uh, anything that connects all the way to your to your you know your your real nerves like and stuff that's why you know you can be a nervous nelly in virgo um and anxiety can come in both sides but anxiety comes in virgo by more complex situations anxiety and gemini comes from very basic ones but all i'm trying to say is and even i'm getting lost that's how much energy there is i'm like oh, there's so much energy to talk about here um, is that it's okay that it's all over the place. It's okay if you're going to feel like all the energy is going to shift your life and you don't know exactly where it's going to shift. And that's okay. And you know what? I think the moon in Leo during this Mercury retrograde is going to say, hey, it's okay if you change your mind about things and you're following your heart. That's what it is. You change your mind about that job. You change your mind about whatever it is. Mercury retrograde in, in a mutable sign is changing your mind, seeing your life completely differently. So there, there's a lot of things that you need to be prepared for here. And, and, and I hate to be that one that gives that without... And the positive is this is going to bring you to the greatest life ever. That's what's so funny about this. And it is a world of so many options. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius and Neptune. I mean, and Pisces. And they're both being aspected. And Mercury, this is a Mercury-Jupiter eclipse. Because the signs that are in the T-square of it are all only based off Mercury and Jupiter. 
That's it. Of course, Neptune, yeah, too. But it's really a Mercury-Jupiter. It really is trying to understand where you're going in a very simple sense. What you believe you should do. The hope that you must find. And Mercury and Jupiter are conjunct during this eclipse. Ironic? I don't think so. That's why I think this is so rare. Super rare. So while I'm pulling up the uh, tarot cards, I'm going to answer a couple questions in the chat room if you have them. Remember, when I do questions, I don't do sun sign questions. I don't do questions based off uh, yourself. I do questions where we all can relate to the question. What do you got for me? Bring it on. 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 <laughs> when will you be doing the live ceremony? Good question. Wednesday night. So I'm going to do it around this time, Wednesday night. I was going to do it Thursday day, but I had some readings that I have to finish and pop up and a lot of things going on for Hope in the Desert. So it's going to be Wednesday evening, probably around this time, probably about 7 p.m. Pacific. So um, I'm going to do the ceremony while the moon's getting ready for this eclipse because the eclipse is happening at like 1.30 or 1.50 in the morning, uh, West Coast, 4.30 in the morning, East Coast. So Americans, we're going to be asleep. And then we're going to wake up and the eclipse is going to be over. So I was like, why would I do an eclipse ceremony after? I should do it on the build up and help people really release and do a prayer and do it all. So Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific is what I'm planning on doing the live show. Great question. Travel is okay during Mercury retrograde. Um, I always worry just more on the day of it, like to, tonight, tomorrow. I mean, I'm traveling to Hope in the Desert to do my event. So, uh, you know, it, especially Mercury and Virgo is a little different about travel. And this one's got Jupiter supporting it. This one's got a lot of solid foundation. It's not like Mercury's making crazy squares to things. It's not. Especially for the first couple weeks of it. Once Mercury gets down to, I think it's 14 degrees, uh, Mars will already be out of that space. It'll be close to Saturn, but it really won't touch Saturn fully. It won't touch Neptune fully. So I, I'm not that worried about the travel aspect. I'm actually more worried, and I'll be honest, to kind of take your question and, and, and jump on it a little bit more. I'm more worried specifically about health stuff, health crisis, weird health situations, weird health things coming up, weird diseases, weird, weird health stuff. I'd be more worried about like a weird, like I have a weird situation where like my dentist put my crown on wrong and it was so weird the day that she put it on, she had a trainee that hadn't put on the, the stuff. And so I have like a, a gap between my gum and my tooth or my crown and water's getting underneath there and touching the tooth that they tried to fix. It's like, it's a weird situation. So you might have a weird health situation you all have to deal with, especially with Jupiter exiting out of Virgo. We all might have weird health stuff that we're going through. Aspects of the body that you might feel, like I said, are worry, but they're over complex situations. And the longer and the longer that you avoid it, the harder they're going to get. So I think the faster that you communicate you know, how you're really feeling about the way things are going in your reality and you don't suppress it, Neptune opposition, Chiron opposition, it'll affect you and your anxieties will get more and more. Uh, I think also as well, it's like going to be just weird health stuff as far as just weird feelings in your body, feelings on pins and needles, uh, your connection to reality being a little bit overwhelming, like, whoa, this is hyper aware. I feel everything. I feel every centimeter of reality. I feel my tooth. I feel my backside of my hair. I feel my butt sweating. Like, <laughs> you know, you feel all that weird shit. <laughs> Somebody wrote, does this explain my heel pain lately? Yeah, I would say it does. Does this describe my back hairs off of my elbow every 25 hours that hurt? Yes. <laughs> like, yes, there's going to be weird crap like that, you know? Um, I 
Financial aspects I don't think are going to be a um, hugely part of this, believe it or not, unless you're Leo or Aquarius. These are the financial houses for them. Everyone else, though, not really. Uh, Venus is in Libra. I think this is going to be more about relationships than finances. Somebody asked a really good question. This is from uh, Jay uh, Taylor. With respect to big changes like jobs, contracts, when are we in the clear? When does Mercury go direct? I'm feeling lost, lots of anxiety, and want to know when it's safe to proceed. Well, it's always safe to proceed. But I want to say this. Just for the fact that Mercury retrograde is happening between both eclipses, okay? And then that's three weeks from now. So... Mercury comes out of retrograde, uh, I think it's on the, like, 22nd, it's official, right before, or right when the sun comes into Libra, how ironic. It's the new moon, I really believe, that everything is going to move forward for us. I believe when you're in the power of the fate train of the solar eclipse during a Mercury retrograde, change is going to happen. Ships are going to change course. Everything's going to change. So there's nothing stable through this period. Even if you make a decision and then it just kind of, kind of is in a weird place. And I think today was the cutoff, you know, of kind of stability. I think tomorrow... Goodbye stability until the first week of October. Can't affect sleep. Uh, Virgo tends to stay up and think a lot, <laughs> right? But I think that you can you can get some sleep in. It'll help. A lot of anxiety. Uh, I have a neighbor who does uh, health, like food for a living, and he told me for anxiety to eat lots of almonds. And then you know what he told me? He's like, you want to trip out, dude? Cut up a bunch of almonds and put it in your water and don't eat the almond. Like, let it all sit there. Like, chop up a bunch of them and then drink three glasses before you fall asleep and your dreams will be crazy. Dreams are also going to be the key through this to help you understand what's right and what's wrong. But yes, no expectations for the next month. Yeah, today was the day. And you know, it felt like we all rushed and we didn't even realize it. Like I rushed onto Amazon to buy all the things I needed to buy today. I don't know what it was. I was going to push it off a week. And even naturally, the universe was like, no, you're going to do it now. Is this Mercury at the last degree, like freaking out? Oh my God, I got to figure out my life now. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, fix it now. Get the thing signed. You know, it's like, geez, man. You guys probably think I'm crazy. I'm crazy! Hanging out in the Leo King studio. Why don't we pull some cards and then I'll look at the uh, last questions and uh, we'll do this. So here we go. Let's pull some cards, baby. I was, uh, I was, um, I was doing uh, some stuff. Now, Wednesday night will be the ceremony for the cards, but I'm going to do these cards for the Mercury Retrograde. So this is the Mercury Retrograde card uh, reading. Let's see how this goes. First card of this Mercury Retrograde is the Queen of Cups. So when you get the Queen of Cups, this is like really all about following your true emotional foundation, but also this is being very secure in your emotions and understanding your emotions. This Mercury retrograde is saying, maybe mentally you're not sure, but emotionally you are damn sure. So instead of keeping questioning, oh, should I do this? Well, what's this? I need a sign with my mind. Oh no, the Queen of, Pen the Queen of Cups, this girl knows. She knows what's up. She knows what's going down. She knows her feelings. She's confident. She's looking in the right direction. And she's not afraid to 
be compassionate yet still a queen at the same time and get this stuff done. Our second card of this Mercury retrograde is the Ace of Pentacles reversed. How funny, right? This is very Mercury retrograde in an Earth sign. So here we are, uh, I think, ending things, ending things that don't work um, physically, our realities, kind of seeing the completion of things and waiting for the new entry of things or it being in between worlds with physical aspects. So maybe stuck on a project, maybe in between on a job change, um, maybe waiting for answers for things to physically come together and kind of stuck in in between. I think you're going to have to like, because the universe wants us to feel things out still. Our challenge card is the King of Cups reversed. How funny. So this kind of changes the game here because we start with the Queen of Cups, but we have the King of Cups reversed. And with the challenge, it's really being an authoritative figure with these emotions. Sure, you might feel this way. Sure, you might feel confident in it. But actually moving forward with it and having the quote-unquote masculine balls, it is a male card, the initiative to follow through on these emotions are, are, are where the issue is. It's like, oh, I feel this way. I know what this is. This isn't working. This needs to change. I'm stuck in between. And then here's the King of Cups reverse and challenge. Oh, I don't know if I can do this, though. It's like, no, you're going to have to, you know, have the the real emotions come up and push them and be authoritative with them. Don't avoid them. King of Cups knows where he's going with his feelings. He doesn't even question it. If it feels wrong, he's out. Feels right, he's in. Fourth, an overall card. You're not going to believe this one. Ten of Cups upright. So overall, that this is really bringing us to a life of prosperity, a full life of happiness, and a full life of feelings. Notice how we have four cups. This is all about the emotions, everyone. This is all about everything with feeling and everything coming together in the right way, just whether or not you can go with your true feelings and get lost in, you know, trying to figure it all out, even though when you know it feels the right way. You know, I think that this Mercury retrograde is going to help you with that. And the overall card we got is the three of cups reverse. So overall, it's like, it's it's hard to have the party that we might want to. We we have feelings that need to come together. And, and maybe you're going to have to take confrontation to a new level and being authoritative with your feelings to get to the party. It's almost like... Oh, I really want to go to that party, but I'm afraid to kind of knock on the door and 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 even though they invited me and kind of go there. That's kind of an interesting card read. Really it is. So, remember, this is rare. This is rare. This week's super rare. And It's just, there's a lot of positive and hope is everything. That's why I'm doing Hope in the Desert. So if you still want to come one day, three day, I even have, if you want to just come Friday for the mixer available, tickets available out in Las Vegas, come out, fly for a day, stay at a hotel anywhere in Vegas, come out and join us. Over 50 people are going to be there uh, next week. Or you can get the pay-per-view, which is going to be all day. It's like eight hours long of pay-per-view live. So um, you can be there for my presentations and kind of watch it all and see all the people and all that stuff. LeoKingEvents.com. The one thing about all these cups, you know, to have four cups and one earth, there's no wands and there were no swords. You know, it, it can be muddy, but it also could be a very emotional time. Heavy emotionally. You just have to step into your power with your emotions and not back away from them. Don't be afraid to walk through the door with them.
Somebody just re-asked, yes, Wednesday there is a live spiritual dance music. It's 7 p.m. Pacific, Wednesday night, right before the eclipse. Somebody says, one day I'll be there. That's on my list to do. Well, this is the only hope in the desert, so I, I don't know what the next one will be. I always base it off the astrology. This one's gnarly. I've never done an event with this much astrology going on in between eclipses like this. Whew. I always plan my events for before eclipses so I can go home and hide in my shell. I'm going to be on stage in the middle of this one. <laughs> It'll be crazy. Oh, thanks for joining me. I, somebody just said this is your first time seeing me. Thanks for uh, joining the show. This is where we talk about astrology and everything metaphysical and spiritual and what's going on. And of the week of all weeks, I don't think it's a coincidence that this is the week. And I want to say this last thing, and it has nothing to do with the astrology, but it kind of does. The reason why I haven't been doing Astro Buzz is because the world right now it just seems like we are all just so focused on our own world. I'm focused on my own world. Everywhere else I see is everybody focused on their own world. Nobody can give a crap right now about the news. It's like everybody lost the, 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 the news. Like It was like the news doesn't affect us no more for some reason right now. There's like this weird thing going on where it's like, I can't even fly an F. I'm dealing with this. I'm going with this. I'm in this world right now. So... I'm taking a break from Astro Buzz so I come back from uh, uh, Hope in the Desert because I'm going to have a whole new camera studio and new cameras and a new switcher and all that stuff to make the show much more live and interactive and like a news show. So that's why it kind of stopped. It's uh, just temporarily stopped. And astrologically, I'm having more fun doing this and helping out and talking about the astrology about what we're going through than doing just news stuff. So... Thanks so much for all the support. I hope to see you. Hope in the desert. LeoKingEvents.com. Pay-per-view or one or three-day tickets available. Or just join us and just come out there. Meet us. Meet us. Join us in the desert. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching my videos. And of course, get my app, the Leo King app. It's super simple to get. You can go to LeoKingApp.com or join me on Apple or Android stores on your cell phone. Or if you don't have an Apple or an Android phone, you have a Windows phone or you have some sort of, I don't know, maybe you're on BlackBerry still, you just go to LeoKing.Lookstack.com in your browser and it's still the app right there. Thank you so much for all your support. I truly appreciate it, everyone. I am going to end you with a little bit of the hope in the desert and I appreciate everything that you do for supporting me and supporting me on my videos. I will see you guys on the uncut tomorrow night. And then, of course, Wednesday night is my big, awesome spiritual dance music live show, which is awesome, especially this one. We're going to be pulling the cards, talking about the astrology, but more importantly, the solar eclipse. And if you want to go through the solar eclipse with me and everybody else, because I'll be honest, I don't know anybody else doing any solar eclipse stuff Wednesday night. I think Wednesday night's going to be hairy. If you want to join it with some positivity and some good music and some fun live for free, join it with me. It'll be a blast. I'll see you all over Tuesday and Wednesday. Or if you're on the app, I'll see you every day in the app with the notifications and the videos. Thanks so much. See you guys later. I am inspired every day because David takes the music of the universe and puts it into a cohesive packet to digest and it helps me navigate and it also the way he delivers it the way he can be spontaneous and fun and make a fool of himself for the sake of all of us that's, that's very uh, very humanitarian of him I would like to say thank you <laughs> for I don't know your energy and just bringing me to all these amazing other people that I met this week because I feel like I will have friendships for the rest of my life after this week with many people here today. And I feel grateful. Uh, David, I'd just like to thank you for all that you inspire in people. And you've brought out a side of me that I didn't know existed. And that's a true testament of a teacher. He has attracted an amazing group of people. And they're all very, very high vibrational, very good, happy, positive. Um, inspirational people. He's been a real good example just um, standing in your truth and speaking it and not being afraid of what other people say about you. Um, he's really given me a lot of courage to 
branch out and do some things that I thought I would never do. But you got to live in your truth. And um, that resonates the most. And he, he talks about that a lot. And I wasn't living in my truth. And I think that's the most important thing. And love. At the end of the day, it's all love. And Hope in the Desert, my awesome conference, has moved to September 9th through 11th. Tickets are now on sale and the group rates rooms are available now. Get those fast. They're gonna fill up really fast. And I have brought the ticket prices way down. I wanna get everybody out in the desert. I want us all to have a great time, bring the hope. And I'm doing it during eclipse season. I'm doing it during Jupiter moving into Libra. Please join me in the desert for my awesome astrology conference. It's in the next two and a half months. Get your tickets now at leokingevents.com. I want to guide us in a prayer and all have us come into really high vibration before we go our ways today and to remember uh, to live without fear. So, dear creator, thank you so much for bringing all these amazing people here to